So what are UVs? UVs are what we call texture coordinates. A 3D model is made out of what we call vertices. Every single vertex contains information about how the object will be rendered on the screen. Amongst them, there is the very well-known world coordinate to know exactly where in the 3D world your object is going to be. And there is also UV coordinates. This is a set of two-dimensional coordinates that let the vertex know where to sample the texture from. Of course, for this video, we are interested in the later one. Now that we have an idea what UVs are, let's go back to the 3D model just for a moment. In order to know how to draw faces, a model divides all the vertices into triangles. All triangles are made out of three vertex. And just like we saw, those vertex, they all contain UVs. Let's open up the UV editor just to see what we currently have and remember that this one is in 2D space. Let's add a create texture to our model. As you can see, by manipulating the UV, you can change which part of the texture is being rendered on your triangle. Don't worry about going out of bounds because texture are repeated in UV space. So you might be wondering, how do we assign UV coordinates to our model? This is a process we call UV unwrapping, and it is usually done with a 3D software such as 3ds Max, Blender, or Maya. Now, as a programmer, we can also play around with the UV, and this is extremely useful to achieve some animated effects. In the next few minutes, we will learn how to move those UV within the Unity engine using c -sharp code. So what we're going to do right now is to create a new script that is going to take the UVs of this object and move them by a offset. It is something fairly simple to do, I invite you to do it with me. So if we right click in the project, go under create, we are going to create a new C sharp script. Let's call it scroll texture. And we'll open it up in Moto Develop or Visual Studio. So what we're going to be doing exactly is we're going to grab the material on the object. Now the material is pretty much just a component that contains information about which shader we're going to be using and also which texture. So it's right here, that's the one we're going to be using. It is a standard shader and it has the albedo texture that we put on earlier. Now what we'll be doing is we're going to grab this material and then add a offset to the texture. You can do this by actually scrolling this right here, the offset, and we are going to do that through code. So let's go back in Visual Studio just for a second and we're going to say public material scrollable material so that's going to be the um, the create texture material and then just beneath it I'll add another public this one is going to be a vector 2 for two-dimensional space and it's going to be direction and we'll declare it on say 1 and 0 for now this one is going to be used to know exactly in which direction should we scroll the material so from left to right right to left up down this is what is going to be used for and then we'll have a public float for the speed. So we can do a scroll of one every second. And just beneath it, I'll create a private. This one's gonna be a private vector two. And we'll call it current offset. Now current offset is gonna to be to know which is the offset right now. And we're going to add on top of it all the time. In our start, we're going to say current offset is equal to scrollable material dot get texture offset so this is this is the function you're going to need if you want to get the offset and then you have to use the property in the shader which by default is always underscore main text just like this then once we have this offset we can go in the update and add to it so current offset plus equal the direction times the speed and then times time the delta time I do this so I can actually move one every second. So this is to make sure this is on a second base. So if I put five here, this is going to be uh, moving five times this vector every second. If you don't use a time the delta time, your, your time is actually going to be based on how fast your computer can update the game. So how many frames you're getting, which is going to be too fast in our case. So let's put that back on one. Now, once we have the new offset, we have to assign it to our material. So we'll do scrollable material, just like we did get texture offset over here, 
we'll do set texture offset right there. So main text, same thing. And it takes a second parameter, which is the value. In our case, current offset. If we head back into the game and we drag and drop this script anywhere, really, you're going to see that you will need the scrollable material. We can take the wood crate material and just drag and drop it in the field, press play, and we should see a result. And ta da, here we go. So we have a moving texture on top of an object. If we go ahead and we play with the speed, you're going to see that we go much faster. We can also go backward. And we can also move on the Y axis. So just like this, we animated a box. Now, obviously, this is not meant to be animated like that. Let's have another look at something a little bit more useful that you might want to have in your game. So I just hopped on Photoshop and I've created this little color picker here. So it's basically the same exact thing as you see in the color picker of Photoshop. I used this and I just flipped it on the side. And I've saved this image in my Unity folder. So let me go back and actually swap this texture for my rainbow color. Here it is. And we get this kind of result. Now I'm just going to get rid of the normal map on top of it. So we have something like this. Now let's actually try playing this. Now this right here, it works because our texture is seamless on the x-axis. So if I just show you, we start from a red color here and at the end we end with a red color. You can also change the formula a bit. So here we have a simple scrolling. If we go back inside of our script, we can actually change this for something. Say, let's use the direction, but instead of doing times speed, we can do times matf.sin with time the time in it. So we'll have a wave animation. So it's going to go forward and then come back. There is multiple things you could do with this. Of course, you just have to be a little bit creative. Now it's time to go get some practice. You don't have to open up your 3D software, a simple texture you want to scroll will do. Try moving the UVs, you could apply it to a repeating texture in the background of your 2D game, or a fog texture with alpha to simulate movement. A water plane, just like you see in this background. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something, and if you did, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, check out the Facebook page or Discord, we're pretty much everywhere now, so guys, just have a look at the description down below, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.